Someone had to take command. Welcome back, Autobots, Decepticons, and everything in between to What If I Survived, the miniseries on trans series that dives into a fictional story of what would happen if a certain character would survive longer in the live-action movies. And thanks to your guys' vote, today's will cover the Decepticon Air Commander, Starscream. So without further ado, let's jump right in. During the first Transformers movie, Starscream had been hiding out on Earth for some time in a military base. Once Frenzy gave the word that AllSpark and Megatron were at the Hoover Dam, Starscream ordered all Decepticons around the globe to mobilize the Frenzy's location. Once Starscream made it to the dam, he would take out the hydraulic power generators to cause Sector 7 systems to go offline, letting Frenzy to be able to let their leader free from his frozen nap. Once Megatron was awake, he would demand to know where the cube was, and upon hearing it to humans out to AllSpark, he would lecture Starscream on how he failed him once again. During the assault on Mission City, Starscream fooled Captain Lonox's unit by posing as an F-22 Raptor, providing cover. Starscream launched an attack that crippled Bumblebee, as Iron had realized too late who the fighter really was. As Sam with Wiki ran off the Allspark, Starscream swooped down blocking his path, only to be countered by both Ironhide and Ratchet, forcing him to retreat. Eventually, real F-22 Raptors from the U.S. Air Force arrived to shoot down Megatron. Pretending to be part of their squadron, Starscream surprised the human pilots by transforming midair, destroying three of the Raptors before he was fired upon. He later transformed back into his disguise and fled. It was not seen in the closing moments in the battle between Optimus and Megatron. Or was he upon the Raptors that fired at Megatron? That interpretation is up to you to think about. But when the battle was done and all the Decepticons were soon to be destroyed, Starscream fled off world of his intentions being unknown. Two years later, Transformers Revenge of the Fallen takes place. Starscream is now the leader of the Decepticons under the Fallen's guidance, and was trying to spawn a new army. But their plan was failing due to the Decepticons having a short supply of Energon. In this film, Starscream sports a new look, for him to have Cybertronian tattoos all over his body, most likely given to him by the Fallen since he became a leader. But Starscream's days of being a leader wouldn't last long when Soundwave's plan of reviving Megatron was successful. Megatron being mad that Starscream left him to die on Earth would prompt Starscream to say that someone had to take command in his absence. This poor choice of words grants Starscream a swift kick to a noggin, with Megatron lecturing him on how even in death there was no command but his. Later in the film, Megatron would need backup to fight off Optimus, with Starscream and Grinder coming to his aid. Optimus will put up a hell of a fight, beating the snot out of the three Decepticons. Starscream will lose an arm in the fight and Grinder will lose his face. But when Prime had his back turned, Megs went in for the killing blow, blowing out Prime's spark chamber, causing him to perish. Soon after, Megatron and Starscream made their way to New York City. Starscream would have to tell the unfortunate news that they lost track of Sam. Megatron questioning how they could lose track of such a simple insect would beat Screamer for this setback, since they need the information that was in Sam's mind to lead them to the Energon source that could restore the race. Eventually, with Soundwave tracking Sam's location in Egypt, the Decepticons mobilized to get him. Starscream would provide surveillance for the ground troops below. Once he got a fix on Sam's location, he would tell Rampage to spring the trap. That trap being Rampage using Judy and Ron with Wiki as ransom in exchange for the Matrix of Leadership, the only object in the universe that could repower a Transformer spark. But once the deal went south when Rampage got killed, Starscream wasn't able to search for Sam any longer and was drawn into the Battle of Nest. But when all hope seemed lost when Optimus was revived using the Matrix, the Fallen stole it back to her power to Star Harvester, which could destroy the Earth's sun and create a massive amount of Energon in return which would be able to use to fix Cybertron. But his victory would be short-lived and Optimus combined with Jetfire, letting Optimus be able to destroy the Star Harvester and kill the Fallen, and severely wound Megatron. Starscream advises Master that they should flee. Cowards do survive after all. Something that Megatron acknowledged, but asserted it wasn't over. And with that, the two headed out before Optimus could take any more faces. Three years later after Transformers Revenge of the Fallen, Transformers Dark of the Moon takes place. After what happened in Egypt, Starscream went to see his master at the temporary camp in Africa. Starscream sucked up to Megatron, saying how it pained him to see his master so weak. This caused Megatron to tell Screamer to stuff it, reminding him that he only knew nothing. Eventually, when Sentinel Prime betrayed the Autobots, Starscream was present with Megatron at Washington, D.C., where Megatron told Starscream how he made a deal with Sentinel to fix Cybertron long ago. Eventually, when Autobots were exiled, Starscream was already in the atmosphere ready to blow their ship apart, where he thought that all the Autobots who were on it were now deceased. Later in the film, Starscream helped the Decepticons take over Chicago, and stood by his leader as they worked their plan to bring Cybertron to Earth. When his still alive Autobots made an attack with Nest, Starscream attacked the V-22 Ospreys carrying Lonox's team as they tried to sneak into Chicago using wingsuits. Although Starscream took out most of the aircraft, Lennox and many soldiers managed to jump their way to safety. Later in the battle, Starscream took several shots at Epps' team, separating Sam and Carly from the soldiers. Taking his chance to torment Sam once again would more or less play with his food, but his intimidation tactic would soon backfire. When Sam used a grapple glove that he got from Q and fired it into his eye, partially blinding the Decepticon, Starscream flowed around in pain, causing Sam to fly through a building window. Then Ness showed up and opened fire on Starscream. As he tried to return fire, Sam jumped into his shoulder and stabbed a boomstick into his remaining optic. 
finally blinding him. Starsky began to lose it, screaming in pain and panic as he tried to scrape it out of his eye. Lennox attempted to free Sam from the grapple wire, but to panic Starsky flew up on top of a nearby building, taking them both with him. As he swore to kill the humans, the boomstick went off, blowing Starsky's head and chest apart. His lifeless body fell to the ground in pieces, while Lennox and Sam were saved from the fall by Bumblebee. And sadly after that, that was the last of Starsky that would ever see in the bay verse ever again, besides seeing his head one last time in Transformers The Last Night. And fun fact, in Age of Extinction, he does have a kill card, though he never saw it on screen. But now this begs the question, what would happen if Starscream never died? But before I get into that, a quick word from day sponsor, Surfshark VPN. Now Surfshark VPN is a virtual private network that makes your internet browsing completely anonymous from anyone besides yourself. That means from hackers, Dylan Gold, your creepy Uncle Lester, and especially Soundwave, who's probably tamping into this transmission trying to steal your data. Now if you want to count on Surfshark, you can put their VPN on everything you own. That means your whole family can stay safe from hackers. Now I use Surfshark VPN to keep my data safe, and so I won't get my channel hacked. And nowadays where data is a new gold is a no-brainer to protect it. Now let's say you live somewhere where Transformers Dark of the Moon was banned on Netflix. What would you do? Well, Surfshark comes to the rescue. By changing your location to where the film is accessible, you'll be able to see it. And this works for any blog content that you can't access. Just change your location and you're in. And if you decide that Surfshark VPN is not your thing, you have a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if Surfshark VPN interests you, check out the link in the description and use my code TRANS to get an 83% discount and 3 extra months for free. And I want to say thank you to the kind folks at Surfshark VPN for sponsoring this video. And what answer what would happen if Starscream would survive, we need to roll back the clock to where Sam shoots the grapple glove into Starscream's eye. And instead of going into a panic, he would get out his buzzsaw and slice the rope, causing Sam to fall. Bumblebee would come in last second transforming in the air to catch Sam, while at the same time blasting Starscream, which would cause Screamer to stumble back and get stuck in a wall. Using this to his advantage, Bumblebee would land and set down Sam, where Sam would meet up with Carly and would watch as the two Cybertronians would duke it out. As Bumblebee kicked jump towards Starscream, Starscream grabbed Bumblebee by the leg, throwing him into a parking garage. Starscream, knowing that he could only see out of one eye, would cowardly leave the fight by transforming and flying away. But Bumblebee would not have any of that and would jump onto Starscream's vehicle mode as Starscream tried to fly away. Bumblebee would drive his fist into Starscream Starscream's vehicle mode, damaging it. This would cause Starscream to transform, sending both of them crashing down into an abandoned street. Bumblebee would grab a car and throw it at Starscream, but Starscream would slice it in half. Bumblebee would then go on the offensive and shoot out his missile pods. Starscream would do the same with his missile launcher, which would cause an explosion, sending Bumblebee back, stunning him on the ground. Starscream would go to Bumblebee and grab him by the throat, ready to snap his neck. But before he could do it, Ness soldiers came in and started to shoot at him. This would cause him to drop B and return fire, shooting off a missile in the soldier's direction. But due to him having only one functional eye, his aim wasn't very good. Knowing that he could not take them all on in his current condition, he decided to flee by using his jet boosters while putting his eye back into place. We would see him later in the film during Prime's Rage, where he'd be backing up Shockwave. As Prime came towards them, Starshin shot off a missile that Optimus jumped over. Shockwave would shoot off a missile as well, but due to his eye not being in place, he missed. Prime, noticing that Shockwave wasn't that big of a threat, tackled Starshin and pinned him to the ground. Prime would get out his knuckle dusters ready to pound Starscream's face in. But during that time Starscream was fending off Prime, Shockwave managed to get his eye back into place and threw Prime off a of Starscream. Shockwave would slice a Prime but Prime would counter by using a sword. As the two got in a scuffle, Screamer got back up. Seeing that Optimus was getting the upper hand, he shot Optimus in the back, causing him to fall. Shockwave would grab Prime by the head and shank him in the side. This would cause Optimus to react by elbowing Shockwave in the head, causing his eye to pop out once more. Seeing this, Starscream flew towards Prime with his buzzsaw, but Prime would make short work of him by pulling out his eye on Blaster and shooting Screamer, causing him to fly into a nearby building. Seeing that Starscream was down, Shockwave would get back up, but he was too slow, since Optimus got the upper hand on him by punching out his kidney. And as we saw in the film, made sure that Shockwave stayed down. As Starscream finally got back up and looked around, he saw Shockwave's mangled body, and angered by the loss of his friend, was about to shoot a missile at Optimus when he was getting the upper hand on Sentinel. But as he saw the Autobot reinforcements, rolling and he knew it wasn't worth it, so he transformed and flew off. Later, Starscream would watch from the sky, seeing his master take on a wounded one-armed Optimus Prime. Thinking what was Megatron waiting for, he would watch in horror as Megatron got owned by a one-armed Optimus Prime, barely standing a chance against a one-armed Autobot leader as he got decapitated. Starscream in shock pondered how Megatron could have lost that fight, and realizing that the mighty Megatron was finally dead, came to the conclusion I was pondering about for a while. Megatron was a weak and pathetic excuse for a leader, and now there could only be one true leader that could rule over the Decepticons. That leader would be him. Him. And with that, Dark of the Moon would come to a close. Now in the Transformers movie timeline, Age of Extinction and The Last Night would come after. But since Age of Extinction is a more Autobot-centered film, with most of the Decepticon faction being killed off, Slippy and Starscream would not feel right. So instead of the events of Age of Extinction and The Last Night coming next, I propose a new film, Transformers Age of Starscream. Now Age of Starscream would be an entirely alternate timeline. 
taking place two years after Dark of the Moon. Instead of people hating the Autobots, which led to the birth of Cemetery Wind, due to their victory in Chicago, the Autobots were praised. Nest as an organization will grow and slowly start to become continental. KSI joined forces with Nest to become Nest Science Division, creating anti-transformers weapons for the United States in case of another Decepticon incursion. With Prime's call to the end of Dark of the Moon, new Autobots arrived, those Autobots being Crosshair's Drift and Hound. Bumblebee, who finally got his voice box back, decided to stay with Sam, who was now engaged to Carly. Epps decided not to go into retirement and stayed with Nest. Simmons and Mearing went on holiday, but Simmons still had a gut feeling that Decepticons would eventually come back. And with that, it sets the scene for what Earth was like before Starscream's reign of terror. You see, during these two years, Starscream had been regrouping all the stranded Decepticons around the globe to rebuild the Decepticon army. And though he was mostly successful, there was still a royal group of cons out there called the Loyalists, who opposed Starscream's rule and were led by a Berserker, who had been raiding Nest bases around the globe in the hopes of finding a prism which could be used to build Megatron's body. As Starscream flew into an abandoned missile silo in Moscow, which served to be the new Decepticon base, he was greeted by a second-in-command Barricade, who looked like his last night version, but instead had his original head and was black. Barricade bowed to his leader, greeting him as Lord Starscream, and no matter how many times he would hear it, it would always put a smile on Screamer's face. Barricade would ask Starscream if he retrieved the prism, which Starscream responded with his plan was coming along, but he did not retrieve it. Now for context, the prism is an experimental energy source that was created by KSI. It can effectively power any machine indefinitely. Barricade a month earlier was on a scouting mission and found out about the prism. You see, Starscream and his armada of Decepticons were low on Energon, which is what they need to power their silo base, and the prism would be a substitute for that. He would then be greeted by his tactician Onslaught, who had survived the events of Dark of the Moon. And Onslaught would question Screamer on why it's been a month and there's been no progress in acquiring the prism. Starscream would tell him without sound it was harder to get into areas infested with Energon detectors, and Superfund wasn't that good at his job. Onslaught would scoff at this, saying if their faction wanted to survive, they would need the prism by the end of the week, or their reserve power would be gone forcing them to move elsewhere, revealing their existence and ultimately getting them killed. Now for some background info, many Decepticons survived the Chicago War, but the ones who would join under Starstream's rule would be Onslaught, Payload, Barricade, Superfund, also known as Loader, and Dropkick. Now Dropkick is not the one from the Bumblebee film, since that movie is a reboot, but the 2011 Chevrolet Silverado Decepticon that we briefly saw destroying humans in Dark of the Moon. And instead of him looking like a protoform, he would have blue and white truck parts, which is an homage to the 2007 Transformers The Game. Now Dropkick was a hothead who loved to disobey Starscream's orders, and would get made into an example of countless times by Starscream, to show what would happen if he disobeyed his rule. Onslaught was a tactician who came up with the best strategies to achieve their goals. Payload was a senior engineer who renovated the silo base to suit the Decepticon's new needs. Superfun was a communications officer who wasn't that good at his job, and his vehicle form was slightly different, for him to sport a surveillance deco along with a radar dish. And lastly, Barricade, who was second in command. So if that is set the stage for our Decepticon cast, but who are the Loyalists led by Berserker? Well, the Loyalists opposed Starscream's rule as a new Decepticon leader, and took to heart Megatron's statement, Even in death, there is no command but mine. As I said earlier, their goal is to steal the prism, and use it to reactivate Megatron's body, which they stole by raiding one of the nest bases a while back. The Loyalists had a base in Southern Africa, similar to Megatron's scrapyard in Dark of the Moon. With all the raided supplies from the nest facilities, they brought it back to their base. Among the scrap was Megatron's mangled body, propped upright on a makeshift operating table. It was for the most part restored, but all it needed was energy from the prism to bring him back to life. Berserker was the leader of the faction, and under his command was Mohawk, Dreadbot, Scrapper, Nitro Zeus, and yes, in this timeline, Nitro is not a KSI prototype, and Mindwipe, which would be identical to his hunt for Decepticons incarnation. Later during the events of Age of Starscream, Onslaught tells Starscream if they want to achieve victory over the Autobots, it would be in their best interest to team up with the Loyalist group, since it will be a combined 12 strong. Starscream scoffed at the idea in joining them and instead decided to take them over. Screamer would go to Superfun and ask him where the Loyalist base of operations was. Superfun would say it was somewhere in Africa. Starscream would lecture him saying that wouldn't help him since he needed a more precise location. And eventually Superfun pinpointed the most likely area where the base was, and so Screamer made his way to the Loyalist base. Once he entered their airspace, Nitro would try to shoot him down, but with Starscream's superior knowledge of air command, he easily beat Nitro, shooting him down instead. But he didn't die from the crash. This caused the rest of the Loyalists to open fire on Starscream, but Berserker would tell him off to see what Starscream wanted. Berserker would tell Starscream that he had some nerve to come here. Starscream responded with that he was here to make a deal, that deal being them to join forces under him to eradicate the Autobots. Berserker laughed, saying that Starscream was a pathetic excuse for a leader, and said if he beat him in a duel, then his team would pledge loyalty to him. Screamer accepted his challenge, and the two started the fight. Starscream would fire off a missile at Berserker. Berserker would easily dodge it, and throw one of his spike bombs at Starscream, hitting Screamer in the leg, causing him to fall on one knee. Seizing the opportunity, Berserker jumped onto Starscream, gnawing at his face. Starscream 
held him back inches away from his face and got out his buzzsaw, shearing off one of Berserker's arms, causing Berserker to jump off of him. Starfiend ripped out the spike bomb from his leg and threw it at Berserker, hitting him in the shoulder. But Berserker transformed the pain into rage and kept charging at Starscream. He jumped towards him with his fangs open. In response, Starscream sliced him at the torso, causing Berserker to lose his legs. Berserker and his fighting spirit still tried to crawl towards Starscream, but Starscream would end Berserker's pathetic attempt by placing his foot on his back. Berserker would wince in pain and said that he yielded, saying that the Loyalist could rebuild him. Starship would say surrender is for the weak, and killed Berserker by shooting a missile at him. The Loyalist would look in shock as their leader was now destroyed. Starship would ask if anyone else wanted to challenge him. The Loyalist would bow down and chant all hail Lord Starscream. Starship would tell him to take any supplies that was useful back to the Decepticon base. Starship would pick up Berserker's head as a trophy to remember him of this victory. He would then stumble upon Megatron's body, and would say how it pains me to do this and shoot Megatron's body. The Loyalists looked in horror as Megatron was blown up, and as much as they wanted to fight back, they knew they would succumb the same fate as their leader. Starship would then pick up Megatron's head, saying that the end for the Autobots was near. As he took Megatron's head as a trophy, he told everyone to make their way to the Decepticon base in Moscow. Once the Loyalists made their way to the base, Starship hatched his plan with the help of Onslaught to lure Optimus out of Nest HQ, where the prison was being stored. And to do that, he needed to pick off a target that would cause Prime to leave Nest. Let's say a target that caused Starship to almost lose his eye with the coordinates being supplied to him by Mindwipe, who uses telekinesis to access a satellite. Screamer flew over the streets of Chicago, where he transformed and landed in the suburbs, aiming a missile at Sam and Carly's house. But as he fired a missile, Bumblebee drove through the garage and transformed grabbing the missile midair and launching it back at Starscream. As Starscream was stunned by his own shot, Bumblebee would use this to his advantage by uppercutting Starscream, causing him to go down. As Bumblebee got out his blaster, Starscream moved out of the way as the shots nearly hit him. He would then return fire by shooting a missile at the ground, causing Bumblebee to fall. He would then grab B by the throat, saying that he would not spare him this time around. But before he could get the killing blow, Sam would run to where the two Cybertronians were at and grabbed out his anti-transformer weapon. Bumblebee would tell Sam to run, but Sam did not want to leave his friend behind, saying that he would blast Starscream's eye out again if he didn't put Bumblebee down. Starscream scoffed and shot Sam with his chain gun, killing him. Bumblebee would yell no and bring out his missile pods, ready to take his own life if it would mean to kill Starscream. But Starscream would rip off the missile pods from the scout's back, saying it was a pathetic attempt. Bumblebee would reply saying that he would not get away with this, and at the same time sent off a distress message to Nest, saying that he was in danger and that Sam was dead. Starscream would say this for Soundwave and stab Bumblebee with his chainsaw through the chest, killing the yellow Autobot for good. As he dropped B's body next to Sam's, he left the area knowing that Prime would be there soon and signaled Barricade to see if Prime had left. And as if on cue, Barricade looked as Optimus left the area, along with Hound, Drift, Sideswipe, Ratchet, and Crosshairs. Once those Autobots were far enough away, Barricade's team consisting up of Payload, Scrapper, Onslaught, Dropkick, Mohawk, Nitro, and Dreadbot charged in. They came face to face with the Wreckers, which consisted up of Roadbuster, Topspin, and Leadfoot, along with Dino, and numerous Nest forces. During this amazing battle, which I'll leave up to your guys' imaginations, Barricade's team won in the end, and were able to kill the Wreckers and Dino, but wasn't able to find a prison. Though Barricade's team won the battle, some cons died in the process, those cons being Mohawk, Dreadbot, Scrapper, and Nitro Zeus. Now focusing on the Autobots, once Optimus and Escrogeon pulled up to Sam's house, they saw Carly grieving over her husband's body, and saw Bumblebee dead right beside him. Ratchet would respond if at least Bumblebee went out protecting Sam, but Prime saddened by the loss of his old friends, made an oath that Starscream would pay by being executed. Prime's sadness got even greater when he heard about what happened in Nest HQ, and how Dino and the Wreckers were killed in battle, and his sadness would turn into anger as he saw how the Decepticons showed no mercy for the innocent civilians who got caught in the crossfire. There would be a funeral for the Autobots that died that day, along with Sam and Wiki and the Nest soldiers who were killed in action. This made Optimus more determined to put down Starscream, no matter the cost. Now moving back to Screamer, Barricade's team would make their way to an undisclosed location, ragging about the Autobot kills they got. But once the topic of casualties came up, Starscream was not happy. But since all the cons that died were from the Loyalist group, he didn't care too much. But where he did care was when Barricade told him that they did not find a prism, and that they destroyed the whole facility looking for it. This would put Screamer into a rage, causing him to grab Barricade by the throat and slamming him against the wall, saying that if he would ever fail him again, he would rip out his voice box. He would then throw Barricade to the ground, making his point to the rest of the cons for no one to fail him. With the prism not in his possession, Starscream decided to send out a message around the globe, and with the help of Superfund transmitting the message from the ground to Mindwipe who was in space hacking the satellite, Starscream's warning would be out. That warning being if the prism wasn't given to him, then he would wreak havoc around the world, making sure every human felt his wrath, creating an age of Starscream. With Starscream's threat out there and taking into account everything that happened that day, 
Optimus decided to make a trap. He would send off a transmission to Starscream, saying that they would surrender to Prism at a secure location, but Starscream would have to retrieve it. Onslaught would urge Starscream that it was certainly a trap, but Starscream brushed him off, saying if there would be a fight, they would certainly win due to their recent victory, ordering him to send the remaining Decepticons to the Prism's location. Once the cons got to the location, which was at an abandoned town, there was a crate in the center of the road. Barricade would urge Starscream to take caution before opening the box, but Starscream pushed him aside, saying that caution was nonsense. And when he was about to open the box, a grenade landed by his feet, that detonated, causing Screamer to fall back. The rest of the remaining Autobots came out of their hiding places, with Prime leading the charge. As Onslaught tried to gun down Prime, he would be countered by fire from Hound. Sideswipe and Drift took on Mindwipe and Payload, as Crosshairs fought Dropkick. While Ratchet was in a duel of Barricade, Prime charged towards Starscream. Seeing that his leader was down, Superfun tried to buy him some time by transforming and trying to ram Prime. But in the end, Optimus countered his attack by stepping on a truck and plunging a sword through it, killing Superfun. As Starscream got back up, he saw Optimus' sword come down at him, but he countered it just in time with his buzzsaw. To counteract Starscream's counter, Prime tried to grab out his Ion Blaster. But Starscream would notice this and shot out about leader for his chain gun. This would cause Optimus to shield himself from Starscream's bullets. With Optimus slightly stunned, Starscream took it upon himself to fly towards Prime, this time making sure to dodge Prime's bullet when it came towards him. He would then grab Prime by the gun, and use his momentum to throw his enemy into a building, stunning Prime. As Starscream looked around, he saw the Autobots and Decepticons clash, with Barricade giving the executing blow to Ratchet, while Mindwipe was slashed in half by Drift. Seeing that Starscream was distracted, Prime shot Starscream in the thruster, causing the Decepticon to stay grounded. Prime would then get out his knuckle dusters, but Starscream countered by shooting off a missile, causing Prime to be unbalanced. But Prime used this to his advantage and used the offsetting momentum to land a direct punch on Starscream, causing Starscream to fly back and get stuck in a wall. Using this to his advantage, Prime lunged at Starscream and grabbed him by the face, lifting him up and kicking him to the ground, where he would then drive his sword through Starscream's chest, causing the Decepticon to stay pinned to the ground. He would see Dropkick flee to battle by transforming and driving off, as Crosshairs was shooting at him, while Payload was getting ganged up on by Drift. As he looked farther out to where Onslaught was fighting Hound, he would look in horror as Hound brought up a shotgun to Onslaught's face, with Onslaught's last words being that he knew it was a trap. Starscream would look around for Barricade, where he would see him hiding behind an abandoned building. Starscream would call him a coward, as Barricade transformed and drove off. At that moment, Starscream knew it was the end. As Prime asked for his last words, Starscream would say that this wasn't the end, but nearly just the beginning, saying he would come back as a ghost, to ruin Autobots forever. To this, Prime would say not today, and shoot him in the head, ending the Decepticons' reign of terror for good. After Starscream's body and the rest of the cons that died that day were buried at sea, Ratchet and Sideswipe being the last of the Autobot casualties that day, will get a funeral. Optimus will make a speech for any Decepticons still on Earth to leave the planet, and for any Autobots among the stars to join him on Earth. But one thing still lingered at the back of Prime's mind. That thing was the ghost of Starscream. And just like that, that completes Starscream's What If I Survived. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you haven't already, check out the What If I Survived playlist for some more awesome alternate timelines. But before I go, I want to say thank you to all my Patreons and channel members for supporting the channel. It means a lot and it keeps my channel running, so big fat thank you to you guys. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, consider giving a like rating because it helped the channel a lot. And as always, it's been Trans Theories reminding you guys to never stop theorizing. Thank you.